back to the channel. My name is Brandon. Today we have a dyno chart, which means the Impreza finally got tuned. And it's been a long time coming. If you've been following along the build, thank you. And you know that we have been doing a lot to get to the point of getting it tuned. I bought the car several years ago. It's a 2001 Impreza 2.5 RS. Already had the motor swap in it. It is a STI EJ257 bottom end with WRX EJ205 heads. Has some internal work done to it. But when I bought it, the transmission was blown. It was a WRX 5-speed with PPG gears in it. Second gear was no bueno, so I knew it had to be replaced or rebuilt. Um, the car was tuned on 93 octane. I bought it in Georgia. I'm in California with wonderful 91 octane, so I knew it was also going to have to get retuned because I was tired of mixing race gas at $10, $11 a gallon. Um, so I knew that work was going to have to be done. I didn't know it was going to take so long. Well, we had a couple years of COVID. Um, I did get married. I had my first child. I had my second child. So project cars get pushed on the back burner pretty quickly. But today I'm gonna to talk to you about the tune, what kind of numbers we got, and what the tuner said about it. But first, I wanna remind you how we got there. After the transmission, we went through a slew of upgrades which you can check on the playlist. I'll link above and below if you wanna see any of these videos. But we started with the injectors. Upgraded those from Botch 1000 cc's to Image Dynamic 1050 X's, and when we we're in there, I also did the plugs and the valve cover gaskets because those seem to always leak on these cars. After that, we moved on to the fuel pump, which is in the back of the car. You don't really need to see it. It's actually under a seat in the tank, so you can't see it. And we also did the fuel filter because that I had no idea how old it was. It's like 30 bucks. It's easy to get to. It's cheap insurance, especially when you're doing work on the fuel system. So fuel was now up to par according to the shop who was going to tune the car. More on that later. But then they also told me I needed to install a Cobb access port, which is in the car. Actually, I don't see it anywhere, but you know where it plugs in under the steering wheel. Um, I had a Cobb version 2, which most tuners and dynos don't support anymore so i had to upgrade that of course to the version 3 but i did save a couple hundred dollars with the upgrade you send in the old one they send you a new one of course they charge you the difference but you do get i forget what it was a couple hundred dollar um credit which was great so jumped on that after that we went to the electronic boost control solenoid uh it used to be manual Tuners don't like manual anymore for whatever reason. They can adjust the boost at certain levels, this and that. That's a baby monitor on uh, dad duty. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Watch the kids while you're working on your car. Um, after the boost controller, we did the air oil separator, which the tuner said, yeah, get the air oil separator. Perfect. Great job. I bought the race edition. And then they later told me, oh, no, you should get the street edition for this, that and the other reason. So I did, I ended up buying the upgrade kit. So I have a race edition parts and then I have the street edition, which is installed. Um, all these funky sloppy hoses. I had to get rid of the carbon fiber strut bar, which I still have, it's not for sale yet. It's actually back there hanging out for maybe the next project. After that, what did we do? Oh, we did the up pipe because of the rusted old nasty one. Videos on that as, too, as well. Um, back there in the depths. We also wrapped it with a, uh, a turbo with a turbo blanket. The up pipe is new with the external wastegate. Had to do that because they were just all blown out and leaking. And um, I actually sent the wastegate to Tile in Michigan, I believe, to look at and rebuild. They said, nope, this thing is trash. They gave me a little bit of credit on it for a couple of the parts that they would be able to reuse and rebuild. And um, had to get a new external wastegate. Had to replace this because the original WRX metal one was cracked and leaking, and I guess this is an upgrade now. Um, all new hoses, which we actually did when I had to do the whole timing belt job. Uh, this used to have red hoses on it, and I wanted to get rid of some of the red in the engine bay. <laughs> yeah, good luck. But I did all OEM hoses upper and lower, um, bypass hoses, coolant hoses, all the hoses are brand new from Subaru. We did a JDM 12 mil oil pump. I did a STI water pump, um, accessory belts, 
we had to replace, I think, two or three of the cam gears because they snapped, of course, when I was um, trying to break them loose with the right tool. I actually had to replace some of these timing covers. Um, the back one, because all these bolts will actually seize into the nut, and then it'll just snap, so the rear timing cover are, have all been replaced. Um, we did pulleys, idlers, I think, yeah, all, basically everything on the front of the engine is new. The oil pump had to repl be replaced because it was all scored and leaking. Um, I had no idea when this job was ever done before, so now I can say with confidence that it is done and running primo. We en ended up not using the RCM Roger Clark Motorsports trumpet intake. That was another misunderstanding from the original tuner who said you have to get a bigger intake because it's going to slow down the turbo and oh and then they came back and said well actually that was only if you wanted to upgrade your turbo your turbo is small it's this and blah blah blah. it's only an 18g deadbolt i don't know that thing's probably 10 15 years old at this point so i don't have a big turbo but they said you needed a bigger intake and i i cut it up you saw the videos and i was trying to fabricate this whole thing and actually put a scoop on here which i don't know if i'm going to keep it it's the six over crest induction hood scoop i don't know we'll see if it grows on me it's just basically to get cold air into here there was no way to run a cold air with this intercooler pipe um i am sad that this was cut out by the previous owner but it is what it is and with the flares and the wide tires there's nowhere to put a filter in there and have this pipe without allowing your car to turn so we just ran with the old engine it's a cut off intake. Um, yeah, it's it, it is carb legal. I mean, originally the pipe is California Air Resource Board legal, so that's a good thing. I uh, probably have to maybe clean up that filter or replace it. Let me let me get the dyno sheet out to show you guys what what you really came here for. Get your keyboards ready because I can hear it already. How much horsepower your friend, brother, cousin? He made a lot more power on his WRX, and it had a downpipe and a cob off-the-shelf tune. So let's see. We are at tune here. You see the dyno graph? Can you see the numbers down here? Let me bring it in. 326 horsepower and 348 torque. Looks like a pretty healthy curve to me. You know what? I am absolutely happy with that number. Let me tell you why. 325 horsepower at the wheels in a car like this is actually pretty good. It gets up, it moves, and I wanted it tuned for convenience, reliability, and consistency. Let me explain. Convenience, 91 octane. I don't have 93. The car can't run E85 very well. It has to can't go flex fuel with the ECU that's in the car. It's an old school 2002 WRX 16 bit, whatever. It's hard to run these things on E85. Unless you're going to run E85 all the time and often, you don't want to tune on E85. You have to get a dual map. It's a whole different thing. So that's convenience, 91 octane. Consistency. These cars can be tuned to the sky if you want them. I mean, all relative if you don't want to blow it up. They can tune, after talking to the tuner, he can make a street car have a lot more high peak horsepower than a track car. The track car you want it to be consistent. You want it to be lap after lap, so they actually bring a little bit of the power out of the car because it is going 10 tenths basically all its life. A street car might only see red line once or twice a week, a day, a month, so they can actually tune a street car um, a little bit more aggressive than a track car. I know, that sounds counterintuitive, but that's what they can do. And I also want reliability. I don't want this car pushing its limits within an inch of its life every single time I take it out. I want it to be fun, reliable. I want to be able to beat on it and not worry, ooh, are the heads going to lift or ah, that rod's going to knock. Ah, I don't know about those head bolts. I don't know. So I am happy. 325. The old tune when I bought the car with the five speed in it, broken, was 350, 360. That was on 93 octane with meth. Without meth, I don't know. Better gas, probably more aggressive tune. I don't know if I'm gonna really feel 20 
25 horsepower. A couple of common misconceptions I think when people tune a car is numbers. Everybody chases numbers. They want a mythical 400, 500, 650, I broke a thousand horsepower. 325 equates to what? Almost 400 at the crank, which is fine. I can tell people out of me, I got 400 horsepower. Oh, oh, I didn't say at the wheels. Anyways, 400 is a big number to get. A lot of Subaru guys, they want at least 400 wheel horsepower. To get this to 400 horsepower, me and the tuner had a good talk. He said, your turbo's too small, 18G. Even if you go 85, you might hit closer to 400, but it's gonna it's gonna die off. The turbo can only produce so much at the at the red line. Um, tapered boost a little bit, I think, from 19 psi down a few um, psi towards red line, but the turbo dies off. If it, if it goes up higher to 380, let's see 400, it's still gonna taper at the end. So it's it's still it's gonna basically like fall off a cliff if you're the more horsepower. So the turbo needs to be upgraded. It's an 18G deadbolt. 10, 15 years old minimum. There's newer technology, there's better technology, bigger turbo. Once I get there, if I do a bigger turbo, I'm gonna need other mods. I have the supporting mods in the engine, but you have to consider axles, drivetrain. This does have still have an R160 WRX rear end in it, WRX axles. You start hitting 400 plus wheel horsepower, you gotta think about these things. Is it gonna need STI axles? Is the diff gonna last? I don't launch it, but what if I did? Will it hold up? I mean, there's a lot that goes into it just to hit an extra 50 to 75 more horsepower. I think it's a lot of work, and I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe down the road, I could put a bigger turbo on it. If I ever need to pull the engine and rebuild it, we'll go a, a newer, better, bigger turbo. But I like how it comes on. It comes on relatively quick. Let's see, full horsepower at about 4,000 RPMs. So it's not super laggy and I like it. The external wastegate is a little bit quieter. It's not as loud as the other one. So my ears don't ring every time I drive it, but I haven't really got much more than just a quick rip around the block. So with that being said, I think it's time to take it for a drive. <laughs> tip in you have to really push on the gas to get it to go uh, I think the throttle cable might be binding up somewhere or a little old we're going to probably just replace that I don't remember the coilovers being as bumpy as they are uh, I feel like I'm a little old for this game I'm starting to notice noises and sounds and how rough things ride. It's it's compliant, it's a stiff ride, it's not bouncy, um, but the teen coilovers that are on it, I think they tend to ride a little rough, a little stiff. All the polyurethane bushings are pretty uncomfortable just driving around town, hitting potholes and manhole covers and whatnot. Even the vibrations when you're idling at a, at a stoplight, you definitely feel more. It has group N, motor mounts, trans mounts, almost everything, and the suspension is polyurethane. So, I mean, it's nice and stiff, and it, and it doesn't move, but, I mean, you feel everything in the road. The dots in the road changing lanes are like, feel like you're hitting a curb. But hey, some people like that road feel. On the road, it's not super enjoyable, but on the track, yeah, that's where it shines. The wastegate, just driving around town, I'm hearing it open up pretty quickly. I'm not sure what RPM. About 4,000 RPMs and at partial throttle, it starts to open up. It must just be in the tune the way um, the tuner set it up. The boost feels like it's coming on more sudden, or not sudden, more 
quickly or earlier in the RPM range. So the power band definitely has shifted left on the curve um, versus the last tune. Because it seems like I used to have to kind of wait for the turbo to spool. And I mean, maybe some of the mods that we did on the previous videos helped that spool, but the turbo is still the same turbo and the intake is still the same. You know, some of the exhaust stuff is different, but in the boost controller might be helping. I don't know exactly the technical reasons behind it, but definitely feels like the turbo is coming on sooner and that wastegate is opening up uh, pretty early. Once in a while it has a nice little pop. I don't like the pops and bang tunes. I know the horror, imagine that. I think it's bad for the sport. I just don't like street cars when they're popping and banging and sounding like gunfire. I am gonna be careful with these tires because they're old. Uh, I do have a set of new tires going on and a new set of wheels and they are not knockoffs. They are real JDM Land wheels. Let you enjoy the view for a minute. 